We are going to talk about resources today. What is a resource? Oh, actually, first, silly Mrs. White. Okay, please turn to page 15. Yay, I don't have to. It says how to locate resources, but it's, you all know about going to the library or doing something else. Well, how are you going to locate resources in, and how are you going to know they're good resources? Um, if you go on like the computer, you can like type up what you want, and sometimes you like you might not want to use your computer because like you can go in and like change the information, so like it's always different. Okay, you have a lot of different points in that thing. Just go on the computer. So if I just opened up the computer and started typing what I wanted, it would just show up. I wouldn't have to do anything else. Just open it up and start typing. Just open it up and start typing, and I get whatever I want. Google Chrome. What is Google Chrome? What, we, what is that? It's Google. What is Chrome? Uh, a color. It is a color, but what is it in this context? An icon that helps you find where you want to go. Great using that non-fiction te non text feature vocabulary icon. It, we do see Chrome as an icon on the computers, but Chrome and IE, Internet Explorer, and Firefox are all something. And Safari. It begins with a B. And Safari, yep, thanks. What are those? All begins with a B. Next letter is an R. Browsers. Bingo. Can we write this down? Do, you can if you want to. You don't need to with this part. I will tell you what part you need to write down. Browsers are, you can't just open the computer and start typing because it wouldn't do it. You have to open up programs. To search the internet, you have to use a browser. So first you go to a browser and then you would go to something that begins, is two words, search engine. What's an example of a search engine? My browser board. Um, sort of like a little bar where you can type something in and then um, it would uh, look for the results of depending on what you typed. That's a, a great definition of what a search engine is. What are some examples of search engines? What is their kind of brand names? Like these are brand names of browsers. Um, like if you go on to Google. Google. That's a search engine. <laughs> Surprise. Oh, oh, Bing. Bing. That's another one. Yahoo. 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 Yep. The drink. Cool Math is a website, not a search engine. Do you have a different one, or were you going to say Yahoo too? Yep. So these are kinds of things. This is like go using these is like going to the library. That would be your browser, and the card catalog would be at the library to help you find the materials you need. Oh, handwriting. There. Facebook is a website, not a research. Keep thinking that's like. No. Yes, sir. Birthday um, boy. for the search engine, um. I have one. Yep. Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not a search oh. engine. That is a website. That's like that's like a book or a magazine. So the equivalent with that would be Wikipedia. All right. Yes. Could you um go on Google Drive and Google? Google Drive is just going to get you the um Google. the document. Google Drive does have a research feature that I know Mrs. Smart has taught you and we've used some of it, but to get a complete research you need to do a regular search. Yes? Uh, Foster. I'm sorry, do you hear what you said? Foster. Foster. It's um... Uh, it's uh, Foster. Do you have a spell? Do you have a spell? No. Okay, so oh, what are you doing? Oh, do you know what he's saying? Okay, so what? I think he's saying like well, it's a suggestion. A search engine. It's a search engine. Oh, okay. Oh. So then there are other search engines. Yes. Um. Uh, 
Time Warner Cable has a search engine. Time Warner Cable does. You're right. Exactly. Okay. So the, so now you know how to where you're going to find stuff at the library on on a search engine. But how do you know it's reliable? If you're doing research about undersea life, are you going to go to Nickelodeon and look at SpongeBob? Why not? Um. Uh, go ahead. Why not? Fiction. Okay, it's not non-fiction. But I heard over here somebody say they might. If it was fantasy. If you were doing fantasy, do you want to add? Uh, yeah. Well, sort of to the fantasy thing, but yeah, there's one reason why they might. Because SpongeBob's underwater. SpongeBob is underwater. But would it be reliable non-fiction information? No. no. But if your question, your research question that you've been working on was about fantasy or cartoon oh. animals that take yeah. place under the sea, would that be appropriate? Yeah. So we're looking for resources, whether they're books or internet sources that are, and this is what you need to write down, reliable. What does it mean if it's reliable? If it's reliable, it is, yes sir? Trustable. Trustable. Oh, good word. Trustable. I don't know if that's a real word, but I like it for in this context. First of all, there's an expert. Yeah. It's done by an expert. Could an expert be a 10-year-old kid? No. Possibly. Well, yeah. yeah. It, uh, tell, me, tell us more, Mr. Possibly. It could Possible. be like a scientist person who knows a lot. Okay. How else could it be a 10-year-old kid? Like, if I went to India, like... Well, I want to know more about football. He would be a good expert. When I wanted to know more about disc golf, you were my expert. Yeah. So, trustable means that it's, it's uh, written, created by experts. Created by. This is what you should be writing. Oh. oh. Created by. On page 15. We'll either Xerox somebody else's notes for you. Okay. Mr. Yep. Filmer. Okay, so what else does uh, reliable mean? Trustable. Got another one? Uh, yeah. Uh, you can trust it so that it's not like um, if you searched up the definition of um, something in, and then if it comes up with something else. Okay, so that kind of fits in with that trust thing and it's created by experts. We know that it's, it's um, true or accurate the information that's on it. Even if it's fiction, that it's accurate fiction, true fiction, we know it's fiction. What else is reliable? Go again, birthday um, boy, you're on a roll. I guess um, reliable is sort of like um, trusting something but having a lot of trust so it's not um, you use it but you type in something like um, and what is, what is the combination for water? And then it comes up with something else like, would you like to know more on this book? Trust it'll is your word of the day, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to move past trust because we kind of got that both here. One thing is dated or updated. You know when it was written. You know when. That's sort of what I was trying to Created. get at, though. And that might be on a website, be the updated Place, or non updated. Or no updates or um, copyright date. <laughs> Oops, excuse me. Okay. Oh. Checking somebody else's notes to make sure. Did I do my class? Or? No, I didn't do my class. Oh. I can't. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Like, if you wanted to learn about you probably would look it up from the 1830s. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I have a couple of videos to show you. Um, the first one is about the reasons, the things we need to find. And don't panic if you didn't get it all down. You can copy from a friend. Um, we've got it on film, so you can take the notes at home, because yeah. we have it on film. 
and it'll be on the website by the end of tonight or by the end of this school day. So there is something called relevance. Oh, evaluating resources. You have to know whether your resource is going to be reasonable for you to use. Oh, I have to turn the projector on. Can you get the light? Sir. Mr. Padman. What are you looking at? You. You. You have something so to say. This is evaluating yeah. and checking your information um, when you're doing your research. This is student. Say hello, student. Now, students' assignments need to be backed up with reliable and relevant sources of information. The credibility of your information sources, in turn, makes your work more able to be accepted. Now, you may ask, how do I know if the information that I have found is reliable and relevant? As a student, you have access to a wide range of information sources including books and journals from the library, and more generally from the internet. In the past, most of the available resources were printed and only available in the library. Academic publishers and librarians act as filters to ensure library resources are reliable and relevant. However, there are no such filters for the information you find on the internet. Anyone can create a website, individuals, companies, and organizations. And there is no guarantee that the information presented is accurate. Student will need to ensure that the information sources are reliable and relevant. There are six key questions that must be asked when deciding if a resource is suitable to be used in an assignment. information quality varies according to the reliability of its source. Consider the publisher. A university press is more likely to publish scholarly information than a commercial publisher. Scholarly sources often have a process of peer review, also known as refereeing, where experts in the field judge that the information is reliable before it is published. You can usually check whether a journal is refereed by checking the information on the publisher's web page. Academic books and journal articles should note the author's methods and assumptions as well as list the references used as supporting evidence. As a reader, you can check these references to ensure that the conclusions the author draws are reasonable. A reliable web page will also have a list of references. But if there are no references or links to other sources, then you can't be sure that the information is valid. So would there really be people on the moon with the astronauts like that? Maybe. In books and journal articles, it is usual that the academic qualifications of the author are listed, as well as the academic institution with which they are connected. The author may also have been mentioned by your lecturer or other authors. On websites and blogs, anyone can claim to have qualifications. There is no simple way to check their expertise, and so there is no certainty that the information they give is reliable. Information from the internet may be published by companies, organizations, and government departments. Government websites have a system of checking information before it goes on the website. But be careful with information from private companies and organizations. If there is no author identified, then you should be wary. A reference list tells you what resources the author used to inform and support their claims. Check that the resources on the reference list are scholarly and that they have been used accurately and not been taken out of context. 
A web page with no reference list may say things that sound correct, but it is difficult to check and be certain. The date of publication can be important in certain fields of study, particularly where information is rapidly changing. Dates are usually clearly indicated on books and journal articles. Also remember that books, particularly textbooks, are sometimes updated with new editions. Sometimes websites do not indicate when they were last updated, and so you cannot be sure that the information is current. Consider the purpose of the information and the motivations of the author. Information can be presented in a way to persuade you of a particular opinion or to buy a commercial product or service. Publications from some organizations tend to reflect the views of their members and are less likely to be objective. So, consider the six aspects of evaluation. Reliability, validity, authority, accuracy, timeliness, and point of view to okay all of these ideas you need to think about when you're evaluating your information so on your notes uh, um, this out of here you already have reliable which is reliability so I'd like you to write the other five down on your notes and instead of writing them vertical it'll be easier if you read them horizontally so point of view which is also known as perspective accuracy authority timeliness and validity. And those are all important things to use when you're doing um, your research and looking at it. To know what the point of view is. To know how accurate it is. That was the trustable piece that our yep. birthday boy was talking about. Authority, again, is it an expert? Timeliness, when was it updated? Or, um, and the validity is, does it, is it true? Or did it come from somebody that it makes sense? So all of those words are very similar in meaning, but they all have a little bit different twist to it. So when you're doing your research, those are the kinds of things you need to think about and evaluate. Does anybody have any questions about this? Hmm. Does everybody have that copy down? No, no. Okay. Wait. Do you have those six, five words? You don't have to do reliability because you already have reliable. But do you, do you have point of view written down? Yeah. I have point of view, accuracy, and I'm writing. Authority? Yeah. Okay. So, end it? Nope, don't end it yet because we've got a couple more things we need to do, and I want to just give everybody time to write this. There, we need to see the end of this video, and then we need to talk about, those of you who are done, I want you to think about what a primary resource is and what a secondary resource is, um, or what you think it might mean. Just hold on, think. Or think, well, you are on fire today. Are you thinking, or do you got something else? I got something on topic. Okay, go ahead. Wait, so, um, wait, I forgot it. No, I knew what I was thinking, but I forgot what you asked. I hate that when that happens to me. Yeah. My brain has a little burp in the yeah. of things. But uh, what was the question again? I forgot. Uh, well, I asked you to think about, if you were done with the note-taking, to write, to think about what a primary resource and a secondary Oh, resource. yeah, now I remember. But I don't want you to answer that question yet, because I want everybody to be finished with it. Are you, Are you kidding answering the primary me? and secondary question? Hold on to it. Okay. <sighs> Which one are you on now, my friend? Um, I've finished one. You finished all of them. Okay. But I haven't wrote on them. I just did. No, that's okay. You just needed to write them down. Oh. Which one is he on? Oh. Uh, which one are you on? Timeliness. Timeliness. It's kind of weird to read it down, isn't it? Step horizontal instead of vertical. Okay. Primary and secondary resources. What do you think they are? <gasps> 65. Um, is 
primary like more updated and secondary is like from further back. Interesting. I want to see what everybody else thinks. Next person in line there. Oh, oh. Um, like a primary resource would be something that you would use most often, but say um, you weren't able to use that primary resource, you would go ahead on to your secondary resource, which would sort of be like a plan B. Using your definitions of primary and secondary, that makes sense, but I want to see what else people think. Yes, sir. Like, um, primary is one that you're, like, like kind of positive that you can trust in your secondary is kind of like, I'm pretty sure I can trust this. Hmm, interesting. Do you have an idea? Um, I agree with both of them. With both of them. Okay. Mr. Berthier. Um, so... What I think of primary and secondary, um, primary means that you can trust it more because it's either been updated more or it's more reliable than secondary because the secondary might be on the same thing, but it might not be, um, sort of as useful as your primary. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Go ahead. Or the primary might have more information on it. So all of you what are you using... Say? what you know about the word primary and what you know about the word secondary to explain what you think a primary source or a primary resource and a primary and a secondary one is. That is usually a good place to start. But just like in life, everything has a little twist or a lot of things have a little twist or an exception to the rule. In the next video, we'll talk about primary and secondary resources. But I want to finish this ending up. The last group that I showed this to, Mrs. Bear's class, so that they really liked this video for explaining this idea about evaluating resources. Be confident that your assignments are supported by quality information. Remember, always evaluate all the information you find before you rely on it. So, um, we're going to look at primary and secondary resources and see if your thinking matches, is reliable in this case. The content of your research project will be made up of primary and secondary sources. Primary and secondary sources come in many different formats and there are benefits for referencing both types in your assignment. It can be difficult to figure out if a source is considered primary or secondary, Mad. but don't worry, because we'll explain the differences here so that you can decide Yay. which are best to use in your assignment. <laughs> primary sources are first-hand accounts of an event, topic, or historical time period. Anything that contains original information on a topic is considered a primary source. Examples of primary sources include things like letters or personal diaries or journals, original photographs, speeches, newspaper reports, creative works like paintings, plays, and music, and research data or surveys. It's a good idea to use primary sources in research papers because it allows you to form your own argument to defend your thesis, since the information you're using is unfiltered by another person's point of view. You're able to critique an original work using your own ideas. Secondary sources interpret, critique, or analyze primary sources. It is information that is created or published from primary sources. Examples of secondary sources include things like textbooks, essays or reviews, encyclopedias, newspaper articles that analyze or discuss events and ideas, and criticisms and commentaries. It's a good idea to use secondary sources in research papers because you can learn about new perspectives that you may not have even considered, and they can also strengthen your own argument in the assignment. For example, if you're writing a history paper about how the diversity of a city shifted during a certain time period, you could use data from the U.S. Census Bureau to compare <coughs> populations across the decades. This type of information would be considered a primary source, as it's data that's simply been collected and compiled. There is no analysis. That's what you'll be doing in the paper. For the same topic, you could also use an article from a newspaper that reviews the data and draws conclusions or analysis from it such as other ways in which the population might change or grow over time. Some sources, like scholarly journals and newspapers, can serve as both a primary and a secondary source, depending on which article you're reading. 
articles that include things like eyewitness accounts or interviews and are published close to the time of the event you're researching would be a primary source. Articles that are published after the fact and include analysis or critiques are secondary sources. Primary and secondary sources can both strengthen and improve your research immensely by providing you with information to create an argument and defend your thesis statement. Now that you know how to differentiate between them, try using them in your own assignment. Okay, so now I need somebody to, can you get the lights please? Tell, and this you're going to write down, a primary resource is what? Um, like something that's new, like really new, like like it said, like if there's a newspaper article that's like around the time that you want to write about, then that's like a primary resource about it. That was a good. Like, it's close, like but like secondary. Oh, yep. Good job checking yourself because we were doing it. New. Another word would, for that would be an original. Or have you heard the term first hand? Mm, not really. Okay, what who said they had? I heard of it, but I didn't know what it means. Okay. First hand experience. Um oh, yeah. I thought many people get a first hand experience from Alaska. Yeah. Uh, or eyewitness. So first you all had a first hand experience at trying ballet. I didn't. Were you absent? Yes. Okay. You were lucky. So most of the fifth graders had a first-hand experience trying out ballet. You actually did it. First, you were first there. You were there. Our friend here, who was absent that day, has a secondary oh. experience because he can only hear about it from us or look at our photographs of our ballet experience. You were there were photographs, and just as an aside, that you all need to know on the porta portal, which I'll there, pull up. There were pictures. I just added oh, on our porta portal. No. Fifth grade. There's one called Fifth Grade Media. This first link is the project, formerly known as the Fifth Grade History Fair project. Yeah. All the videos that we've been doing in class for the lessons, but then all the pictures that we've taken so far this year there that I've taken so here's the ballet one down here at the bottom so here no. so is the photograph a primary source or a um, secondary source primary. Uh, why do you say primary. what do you say primary because it's right um, where it was did I take it that day yeah, I took it that day. It was taken that day. So these photographs are here of the ballet experience. There's a zillion of them, so I won't go through all of them. Some of them are in action. Yep. So they're all there on the Porta Portal now for you to see. So that's a primary resource. So if you were going to do that's a first hand and eyewitness experience. Now if our friend who was absent that day wrote about the ballet experience by looking at the pictures, he would be creating a secondary source. He'd be taking the information from the pictures and creating a um, an opinion or an analyzation or um, a hypothesis about the data and I'm going to go in to that definition here for secondary. An autobiography would be a primary source, a biography would be a so, uh, somebody Ooh. secondary source. Why? Because somebody wrote about like somebody else. Right. If I write my autobiography as a teacher, I'm writing it. It's about it's from my perspective, it's my opinion, it's my experience, it's original first-hand eyewitness. 
if I include pictures, it can be images, it can be artifacts, it can be things. A, sec a secondary service uh, resource is information Get your arm out of the way. from the primary. Are you supposed to be writing this, please? I can't write it. Well, well not you. From the primary. That right. is summarized, analyzed. Why can't you write it down, my friend? Oh, I'll get a different pencil. Reworded. You can. I'll move out of the way and just do it. Interpreted. Hey, on the way. So that's a secondary resource. Now are we going to end it all? Let's do it. What should you we can go you can go ahead, huh? And end it?